Okay, now to 5.3 part two, we're gonna discuss ionization energy. And um, I'll go ahead and tell you what it is first, and then I'll tell you what the trend is, and then we'll revisit it here. Ionization energy is basically the energy needed to remove an electron from a neutral atom. Okay, so the energy needed to remove an electron from a neutral atom. So let's go back to our fluorine example, uh, where we had, if I can find it, one moment. Okay, we have fluorine versus sodium versus lithium, rather. Okay, over here, fluorine has one empty shell, I'm sorry, one empty seat, nine protons, and we already know that its radius is very small, okay, because these nine protons are pulling these electrons in towards the center. Well, it really, really, really wants one more electron. So it's going to do whatever it can to gain that electron. And this stuff is highly, highly reactive because of that. It will react with almost anything because it wants to fill that one empty seat. In other words, coming in contact with this stuff, will it'll burn almost anything upon contact. And it's highly, highly deadly uh, and dangerous uh, in its elemental form. The reason why, it's got an incredibly strong nuclear force here, nuclear power, that wants to fill this last uh, empty seat. Okay, it wants to fill this last empty seat, and that's called electronegativity. It's got high, high electronegativity. It wants to pull an electron from anything in it that it can. That is electronegativity. The energy required, that how much an atom wants to, an electron from another atom. That's electronegativity. Okay. Ionization energy is how much energy is required to remove an electron. To remove an electron, okay, from here to here, let's say. This would be ionization energy. So as you can imagine, it's going to take a massive amount of energy to try to strip one of these electrons away from fluorine because there is no way it's going to want to give this up, as opposed to lithium, which only has one electron on its outer shell, or sodium, which only has one, especially, look at sodium. If it gives this one electron away, then it's going to have a noble gas formation, won't it, with eight electrons around in its, uh, in its valence. Okay, eight valence electrons. So it's gonna really wanna give that away. So the amount of energy required to strip an electron away from sodium, which is the ionization energy, okay, is gonna be much, much, much lower than the ionization energy needed to strip an electron away from fluorine. Got it? So ionization energy, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and define it then. Ionization energy we can say is as follows. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from a neutral atom. That's the ionization energy. And electronegativity is how much an atom wants an electron from another atom. The trend is the same for ionization energy. Oops. Let's see if I can get out. Zoom out just a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's electronegativity. How much an atom wants an electron from another atom? The trend is the same as IE ionization energy. We'll visit this next unit. You don't need to write that in. Okay. So those are those two. Those are the two concepts there. Ionization energy, energy required to remove an electron from a neutral atom. Electronegativity, how much an atom wants an electron from another atom. Again, the most electronegative atom is fluorine. This guy right there is, and I'll find a video for you that shows actual fluorine gas. Uh, it's extremely, extremely electronegative and it wants, uh, it wants electrons like nobody's business. It will react with anything. Highly electronegative, okay? On the opposite end of the spectrum here 
is cesium that's got an electron that's very, very far away from the nucleus, and it'll give it away like nobody's business. Okay, so that's got a very, very low, very, very low um, ionization energy. Okay, it'll give that electron away freely. All right, so there you have it. Let's go ahead and identify the trends then. We'll highlight these, shall we? In general, sorry, let me just get set up. Okay, in general, ionization energy decreases, decreases down a family and increases across a period. Elements with the highest ionization energy are found at the top right. Elements with the lowest ionization energy are found at the bottom left. Now you can memorize that, or you can go back and think of the examples of fluorine and cesium that I just got done telling you about, and fluorine and sodium rather, and cesium. Okay, let's try to explain everything that we just learned in, in actual words. The number of pro, and we'll look at sodium and potassium as our examples again. Going down the periodic table, this is the easy part. Okay, we add more electrons, the radius gets bigger. But let's go ahead and look at sodium versus potassium, and we'll try to put it in, in words here. What is going on? We've got in sodium, the number of electrons is, I'm sorry, the number of protons is 11. The number of electrons is also 11. The electron configuration is 1s1, I'm sorry, 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 6, and 3s1. 3s1, that's that one right there. We're in the third row. One, two, three, third row. We call it the third shell. Okay, now let's look at potassium. Potassium's got 19 protons, 19 electrons, and its configuration is the same as this with a few extra, right? So we've got 1s1, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. 3p6, 4s1. Okay, so now let's try to explain what just happened. We've got an extra shell here. This electron is further away from the nucleus. It's got a lower ionization energy, and that gives it a larger atomic radii, all of those things. So let's try to put it here in words. The outer electron of K is in the fourth shell, while the outer electron of sodium is in the third shell. Because electrons in the fourth shell are further away from the nucleus, K has a larger atomic radius than... That should not be Ca, that should be Na. Shame, shame. That should be Na, okay? Go ahead and write that. Because the outer electron of K is in a higher shell than Na, it is further from and less attracted to the nucleus. So it requires less, ion less energy to remove. So K has a lower ionization energy than sodium. Copy that. Now we can explain the trend. Going down the family, outer electrons of the elements occupy higher shells Shells are again. I was calling them rows. Okay. Well, let's not let's not cross it out. Shells. Remember, I just calling these the rows, but really they're called shells. Okay. I started out by calling them rows, and that's what they're talking about with these shells. 
which are further from and less attracted to the nucleus. So the atomic radius increases and the ionization energy decreases. Again, the further this thing gets away from that nucleus, that positive charge nucleus, this fur the further this negative electron gets away from that positive nucleus, the less energy is required to strip it away from its atom. Okay? The, in other words, the less ionization energy is required. Okay? The ionization energy decreases. Why? Because this last outer electron is out there by himself. It's not very attracted to this nucleus, and it's not going to take a whole lot of energy to remove it. That concludes notes 5.3 part 2. I will do one more video.